something is so clear to me that I don't need to work it out, then it might not be important enough for a song. The feeling I have towards like wanting pizza for lunch is like real clear. There's no complication there. There's no sandpaper. I'm hungry. I want to eat. I know what I want to eat. Whereas like relationships, grief, trying to like navigate these things, that's like a really interesting balance that I'm always playing with and looking at. If you drop all these things that weigh you down, you're not you anymore. But if you carry all of them, you can't move forward. I find if I'm not working something out in a song, I'm not doing my, my job or something, I'm not doing it right. Between the pandemic and our world, everything's going on culturally and Trumpism and all these things, it, it made me go like, okay, who's the fucking virus in my circle? Who's the fucking Pence in here? I think it's funny because like we all have like the narrative of, of, of what we're carrying around and then all the things that we're not realizing. So it's like, I lost my sister when I was 18. So that's like a big, tragic moment in my life. But a, a thing happens when you when you have a, a big life event like that or a big trauma or grief where you can sweep everything under that rug. So then like, oh, I'm having a panic attack. It's because this thing happened. I'm bad at relationships because this thing happened. So you become sort of like a genius <laughs> in terms of one kind of grief, but then you kind of become an infant in all these other areas. So this song is also about like looking at all these other things, you know, like maybe my parents' relationship was fucked up before this tragedy. Maybe I had some panic and anxiety issues before that. In the song, I'm as much kind of the character who's stuck in the quicksand as I am the character who's standing above it talking about it. Daniel puts the kids to bed and they're screaming, oh, the gods must be crazy. Jimmy's on the road tonight. She doesn't recognize her country. Daniel puts the kids to bed. They're screaming, the gods must be crazy. It was a conversation I had, Daniel's real person, my best friend, where it was just, the world was kind of on fire and he was just telling me what it was like to have kids. And I liked that opening it, just like talking about kids being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Jimmy is, is Lana and my nickname for her is Jimmy. So I remember I was talking to her and there, was, there had been a shooting. Um, which could have been any day of the week. She was in California, I was in New York, and we were talking about it, and it was just talking about not recognizing this sort of mythology of a place that, that it was crumbling in real time. The more specific I can be, sometimes in a weird way, the more understandable it is to people. So if I'm like, my friends, kids are freaking out about the world, it's like, eh. But if I'm like, Daniel puts the kids to bed and they're screaming the gods must be crazy, that's like, that's just conversational. My father's in the room next door crying with his ma at 65. Every time I close my eyes, I just see it written in big lights. Well, the verses, so, so they're, they're, they're written like a folk song, right? Daniel, Jimmy, my father, me. Second verse is my mother, the kids, my sister, me. I'm not actually telling you how I feel, but I'm telling you about everyone in my life, which is in, in many ways is the deepest way I can tell you how I feel. You know what it says? I look at that, look at all these people and what they're going through, and I just see it in big lights. Stop making this hurt, literally. Stop making this hurt and say goodbye like you mean it. Stop trying on this hurt. Just say goodbye like you mean it. You got the shit, right, that you're carrying around, and you're either gonna sort of drag it forever, or you're just gonna fucking say goodbye like you mean it. Say goodbye like you mean it, which is a little bit dickish, is sort of just like, drop it, fuck it, you know, let's let's move on. The device of going through all the people in my life and all the shit they're dealing with creates this anxiety of just like, stop making this hurt, say goodbye like you mean it. Of course, it's a relief. My mom is in the house tonight and she's trying to break free of New Jersey. There's a huge interplay between New York and New Jersey. All other cities, LA, London, right? Like they just sort of like sprawl out. New York is like fucking boom, river, New Jersey, New York, all the energy flying off of it. It's like ultimate younger brother, ultimate outside the window of the party. And that's also the thing about New Jersey is like when you grow up that close to New York City, it can breed this sense of like, I have to break free of this place. Look at that. While the kids are on the street and they're crying, let me live in my country. But me and Ray, we got a dream and a car, we're like free as the night. So how come every time I take a drive, I just see it written on street signs? There's no poetry, there's 
kids screaming on the fucking street. That to me was also, I wanted to ground the song in a time period. Because the song is about personal chaos, but there's a cultural chaos too. And that's the interplay of the song. You know, to say something as intense as kids are on the street and they're crying, let me live in my country. That's like, but we have a car <laughs> and we can just go anywhere. You know, like it's this crazy sort of manic back and forth. And then the next line, which rips it right back down is, but every time I take a drive, I see it written on street signs. And so that speaks to this idea of like, you know, you can't, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from what's going on in your city. You can't get away from what's going on in the world. You can't get away from what's going on in your family. Ray is Rachel, that's my sister. So that was sort of the final piece of the puzzle. You know, my whole family, my mom, my dad, and my sister. <laughs> but if we take the sadness out of Saturday night, I wonder what we'd be left with. So if you really stop making this hurt, right? Which take the sadness out of Saturday night, is another way of saying it. Then is that thing I was talking about earlier where there's sort of nothing worth writing? nothing worth talking about. Although I've said all these personal things, that's when it actually becomes personal because then the character telling these stories is actually saying like, wait a second, like um, you can't stop making it hurt. Anything worth a fight, I wanna run from the darkness, wanna shout at the light that it's coming over me now. Two, three, four, five, oh God, we barely survived. After I've told all these stories and then I get to the bridge where the realization is like, no, that that's kind of what it is. That you're gonna. Find yourself in it or you're gonna let it kill you. When you realize that, you're like, oh my God, like I almost let it kill me. So it is meant to be an explosion, cathartic moment to shout, you know, wow, we uh, barely made it. Baby, 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 stop making this hurt. The other character on the song, which I didn't anticipate, is the band. What I didn't realize is that when the pandemic hit and we got to a place where I can't go play live. It creates something where, okay, now the band has to get in a room and play like we might never play again. It actually worked even better because then I had this band who just well, couldn't play for a year. So they played it like their heads were on fire. Scientifically, the amount of energy that comes off of New York City, right? And it's not like a trickle out of energy. It's like, boom, water. What does it do to the people that live outside of that to just like get this like runoff energy that they're not a part of? You hear it in the music. New Jersey music is all this hope and anxiety and it's melancholy, but it's get me the fuck out of here. New York music is like reporting from the center of the world. 